All right, so yes, uh, I'm working for Simla as a PhD student, and my approach was to use automatic hyperparameter optimization for this uh, approach, uh, for this task. Um, so we did this through a system called uh, Saga, which is a system we're working on right now. Uh, it's very work in progress. Uh, we also use transfer learning. I see that I think all of the groups have used transfer learning so far. Uh, and we used it on ImageNet. Um, we use something called Bayesian optimization for the uh, optimization, for, for the hyperparameter optimization. And that is uh, s sequential uh, optimization algorithm based on obs observations. Uh, so the way it works is that you start with a, an arbitrary function and then you make observations and those observations would be typically hyperparameter configurations. Let's say you have the learning rate and uh, a, a gradient descent optimizer. Th those are two hyperparameters you use. Then a combination of that would be an observation. So you make different observations and uh, based on them, you kind of map out the function. So the the lowest result will be the best one there. And uh, in addition to doing the uh, the hyperparameter optimization, we also try to do a few manipulations of the data set, which I will come back to. First of all, this is the system, uh, early prototypes. So we c you can uh, choose a lot of different hyperparameters here. Uh, it doesn't show everything. You can also decide how the Bayesian optimization will, f will work. And at the end, you can also visualize uh, the predictions. And you can also click on the predictions and get the image itself. So it's a v nice way of um, seeing what the, the network or how it functions and what what it thinks about different classes uh, yeah and from this uh, we can see different things from from the first row um, we have two images which look pretty similar and that is because the, it's two images of the set line However, the one on the left is actually a normal set line, which is correct, uh, which is wrongly classified as esophagitis. And on the right, you have esophagitis, which is wrongly classified as a normal set line. And this just further illustrates the point as has already been made that these are difficult to differentiate between. And it's... Uh, it's something I try to solve because, uh, and, and the way I did it was that th all the images of esophagitis with set line was then uh, uh, put in a different class. So I worked with seven cla uh, 17 classes instead of 16. And the idea behind that was that those classes in the esophagitis class, you know, th those images in the SFGIS class that were um, upper or didn't have include the set line would in some way uh, confuse the, the classification. Uh, and I wanted it to s try to notice the uh, what actually makes uh, SFGIS when it's when it is on the set line, which is an irregular circle. And the, b the, bottom, the bottom two images just shows that uh, between other classes in the data sets, it's very different. Uh, so which makes this a curious data set to work with. And what you can see is from running the hyperparameter optimization with different models, 
we have actually several models with really high, uh, I use validation accuracy for, uh, for this. And you can see it has very high validation accuracy, which would kind of uh, allude to that the model and the, the configuration itself doesn't matter that much. It's actually the data set itself that maybe needs more work. And we need to have more images, re uh, remove the artifacts, uh, maybe do post-processing. I did not do any po post uh, pre-processing, I mean. Uh, so these are my results. I had two runs where I just did hyperparameter optimization, and those were the ones performing the best. Where I split the S of Agitis class, it didn't work, but the th there could be several reasons for that. It could be that I myself didn't do a good enough job when splitting the classes. Um, also, I tried to add some images to out of patient uh, class, as others have done, and it's improved only that class, but uh, didn't work that well uh, as the final test set didn't include that many out of patient images. And those, these are my best hyperparameters, the ones I found. Then SNET, SGD, and I split the learning rate because uh, there's two steps of transfer learning. First, when you remove the top block and then retrain um, the, uh, the, the, the final block, and then when you do the fine tuning itself. And what was interesting is that uh, the best layer to tra transfer learn on, or, or it what I found was that actually fine tuning all of the layers was the best approach. Um, yeah, this is our confusion matrix from the best one. It just shows what you've already seen from others, that the SFG this class uh, here um, and the normal set line is confused. Also, I didn't do this instrument uh, trick that others have done, so I didn't get a good result there either. And I actually have the same uh, as the last group, so that's also interesting. Uh, what I found is that hyperparameter meter optimization g does get good results, but uh, it didn't improve. Uh, er, er, the it g got results for a lot of methods in this uh, case. So I think actually the data set itself is what we need to improve in order to get better results in the future. And for future work for myself, I would include post-processing and also cross-validation because I only run it once and it would be a better, more sound result if I run it with cross-validation. Thank you.